I can tell you that my knee was an unstable when I had to extend it. And I'm sure a lot of people who have knee injuries can relate to this, that I would, I would hyperextend my knee a little bit to, to almost get it back in place, you know, and you feel that pop, you go, ah, feels better. And if I correlate it on the x-rays, it shows that the, my fibula was mildly displaced because of all that, because of all the laxity of my ligaments and my joints and, the, the 20, and that amount of fluid in there. So after that procedure, after I had the medication, it's, it's normalized. It's back in place. My knee is back in alignment, and so is my fibula, the small little bone next to the knee. That's back in alignment. I mean, it, it just amazes me. And, you know, as doctors, we don't get amazed a lot. I mean, we see these things. I am amazed. I am really, as a doctor, I am amazed. And even on my MRI, the prior to the study, it showed that my posterior cruciate was buckling because of all that what I just described. And that's now stabilized, which explains why my knee doesn't pop. I mean, it's helped correct some of the, of the malformation that was due to the wear and tear of my knee. I played hockey my whole life out my knee in high school and you know then about 93 so about when I was in residency I finally had a patella tendon graft and you know so I could function used its knee brace when I went skiing playing hockey and as I got older I said okay maybe I don't need the knee brace pulled up my quads and just kept going along and finally in the past couple of years my knee just would always swell I'd walk up and down a few blocks and my knee would swell up and I would get it drained and then get better, take some Celebrex, anti-inflammatories, therapy. It's very frustrating. And in fact, in the last two years, I kept getting my knee drained because we were trying to prevent surgery. And the last time, it was 28 cc's of fluid. That's a lot. And that was every few months. I was doing it, I did it three times. And, I, and, I, and even after that, my knee would still hurt. And I would just try to ride my bicycle for my exercise, low impact, you know, get outdoors. And it would still, at the end, I'd have to ice it and the next take my, take my anti-inflammatories and just maybe feel tight the next day, try to go to chiropractor or therapy, use my tens unit. And I'm like, me as a doctor, and I know the risks of surgeries, right? We all know the benefits and risks. And, you know, the next option was partial knee replacement. And I was like, I was going to bite the bullet. I was like, I want to, I'm still young, I'm active, I'm healthy, you know? And I said, and then, you know, I've done stem cells in the past. I don't know if you knew that. I'd done stem cells and, and PRP before COVID for the same purpose. And I got I got good response. It wasn't like great, but it was more functional, didn't swell up, you know, it was less symptomatic as we say. And but it didn't last it didn't last long. Not at all. I was like so I was like frustrated, like I'm gonna have to have the surgery. I was so pissed. I actually went to a, an orthopod who did surgery for the Miami Heat. This was before I did the other product. He told me to do a full knee replacement. I can't tell you how much better it is. It, it's it's night and day. I went to the yeah, this was I had the injection about a month after the injection. I went to the Super Bowl week, uh, and you know how when anyone who's been in Vegas, you walk up and down steps and walking miles. Not my knee didn't swell once. I didn't take one anti-inflammatory, and to this day, I'm riding my bicycle. I'm, I'm playing battle. I'm playing pickleball. I mean. I mean, with, you know, yeah, I'll ice down a little bit, but who shouldn't, you know, maybe an athlete that didn't do it. I mean, rarely I'll get a little bit of swell edema. I find it interesting though, I don't know if your experience, but I have a little bit of edema. If I exercise a little bit more, it goes away. So I think it's, I think it's the, you know, it's the compartmentalized of the tissue, of the water, the fluid. So it just, it just dissipates. As a, as a patient and understanding the pathophysiology of the, this product, I, I can tell you that my knee was an unstable when I hyperextended, and I'm sure a lot of people who have knee injuries can relate to this, that I would, I would hyperextend my knee a little bit to, to almost get it back in place, you know, and you feel that pop, you go, ah, it feels better. And if I correlate it on the x-rays, it shows that the, my fibula was mildly displaced because of all that, because of all the laxity of my ligaments and my joints and, the, the 20, and that amount of fluid in there. So after that procedure, after I had the medication, it's it's normalized. It's back in place. My knee is back in alignment, and so is my fibula, the small little bone next to the knee. That's back in alignment. I mean, it, it just amazes me. And, you know, as doctors, we don't get amazed a lot. I mean, we see these things. I am amazed. I am really, as a doctor, I am amazed. And even on my MRI, 
the prior to the study, it showed that my posterior appreciate was buckling because of all that what I just described. And that's now stabilized, which explains why my knee doesn't pop. I mean, it's helped correct some of the, of the malformation that was due to the wear and tear of my knee. What I read is that if they're a little bit older, it may take a little bit longer for it to kick in, so you have to be patient. I know we say, hey, look, this is a miracle. Like, I'm just, I'm preaching this is a miracle cure. But be patient for it to happen. <laughs> Sometimes it happens overnight. It may take a week, and it may not be immediate in a 90, 90%. I would say about 90% better. You know, three days I started noticing a little improvement. I would say by seven days. But as I said, Super Bowl week was the um, first week of February. That's when I was started celebrating. Because I've been to Vegas before with this name. And I was like taking a break, stop, you know, take my takes, take the anti-inflammatory before I go. You know, my girlfriend at the time would massage my knee. And I'd be, you know, I was a restless sleeper. I couldn't sleep when my knee swells up like that. And I can relate because I'm a sleep specialist. I asked my patients, I could not sleep well when my knee was inflamed like that. You know, it's not, it's just not comfortable. The edema, you can't find a place. I was sleeping well. I still sleep well. My knee does not bother me. It, it does not, which now gives me a little bit more energy to go on with my life. And I'm now more motivated to do my exercises, you know, stretch, 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 right? How many times do we say that? But I do that, you know, and, and it, I can do it because I see the results. It allows me to be healthy again, to go on and do what I want to be with my life. Because as we all know, it's functionality. My knee is never going to be, be normal, but it's better. And, you know, there's still going to be deterioration, but it's like I push the clock back, you know? It's like I'm not doing surgery. And if I do healthy activities and do it smartly, I can now avoid it potentially or, you know, need a second shot. But that not that worth money? Isn't that worth quality of life? I mean, you know, we help. And it's nice to be able to understand this new, you know, technology with, with, with this medication and peptides and how it does help. And yeah, I do, it is, you know, it's, it's not free, it's, the insurance doesn't cover it. But, you know, I told someone, I go, so if you were to have, for example, for me, if I were to have my knee surgery, right, I have to pay for the doctor, the anesthesiologist, the the, the, surgery, the surgery center, the labs, and it still comes out, that, that still comes out to about five, six thousand dollars. You know, you, you deductible, it still comes out to that. Now, don't forget the rehab, I have to pay for that. Then I lost work time. You know, you think about all that, you know, people say, oh my God, it's expensive. I go, but if you think of the alternative, forget your quality of life, just financially, it makes more sense. You know, besides your quality of life and what it really, it really is changing. It, it's phenomenal. I mean, for, as a doctor, reading what it does and, you know, and that it changes, it actually changes. We're not treating, a, we're not band-aiding it. We're not treating a symptom. We're actually changing the pathophysiology. We're, we're making a difference. This medicine actually changes your dynamics. If you're a diabetic, you got neuropathy, you're, you know, you risk your heart attack. You're reversing that process. It may not be permanent, but instead of being advanced, you're now in the mild phase. You know what that means? We're, it's actually changing it. But don't look at it as a one-time deal, financial cost. This is a lifetime treatment. You know, it's like, yeah, you have to pay, you know, you have to pay one time. But if you exponentially bring it out over a couple of years, it's not that expensive. And the quality of life, and your better medical health, better social health, better mental health. I mean, people forget that they are, they're right, they put themselves last. They realize they have to put themselves first. It's not being selfish. <laughs>